This was the historic scene at center ice moments before the Calgary Flames opened their inaugural game in the NHL against Quebec. Overall, I think it'll be great. Calgary will be a very strong team. They tied Quebec 5-5 that night, but more importantly, Calgary made hockey's big time. You knew right away Calgary was going to be a big, big hockey market. The, we knew what the culture shock was going to be, you know, the, going from what, this climate to, the, to that. But we also knew we were going into a hockey climate, and that was, that was the positive thing. My first year in Calgary, that was good for me. I kind of got refocused and trained a little bit, <laughs> tried to get in shape, and I had the best year I ever did my first year there. The first night they opened up, and I went to break the, they had a, a piece of paper, you know, that we were going to come through, and they had some, like, a ring. And I went to hit it with my stick, and my stick wouldn't go through it, so I was, uh-oh, <laughs> we're in trouble. That was about the only mistake in year one. A major reason Atlanta failed, the Flames never won a playoff series there. In 1981, they won two, sweeping Chicago and upsetting Philadelphia on the road in Game 7. We're leading the series three games to two, playing at home, and, uh, and, and they beat us. So now we have to go back to Philadelphia for the game seven on a Sunday, and I don't think there were too many people who thought we had a chance to win that game. They took three really unnecessary penalties in the first period, and we scored three power play goals and hung on to win the game. So uh, that was very, very satisfying. And the Calgary Flames are jubilant, they're out on the ice, having defeated the Philadelphia Flyers in the seventh game here of the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And they go on to the semifinals in Stanley Cup 81. Oh, that was awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, well you were. It was awesome. Well, right I mean, it, yeah. and, and we actually went in and, <laughs> and dominated the, you know, the, the uh, Flyers, actually, you know, to beat them 4-1. But I think what we all remember was the fact that Mr. Scalbania said uh, if we win the game, we've all got two tickets to Hawaii. So we said, wow, that's pretty good at center. Well, it was kind of like that. I think when we beat Chicago, I, I, I embarrassed him actually into saying that. <laughs> Plett, by the way, said he never actually took that trip. Meanwhile, this is where the Flames played in their first three seasons in this city, the Corral. It's tiny, seats just 7,000 people, but it had true home ice advantage. For example, in year one, Calgary lost just five games in this building. Well, one of the reasons uh, we did so well that first year was uh, the, uh, it was really intimidating for a team coming in there because whether it was an optical illusion or whether it was reality, the board seemed very high. I mean, we had a small player like Bobby Lalone. You, you had to give him a boost to get him over the boards uh, onto the bench. He had one of those little bubble helmets. That <laughs> he'd skate around, all you could see the top of his helmet going around. And when there was a change on the fly, he never went over. He had to go out the door. That was a pretty big drop. Only Jim Poplinski survived from that first year to win the cup in 1989. But for those who made the trip northwest, it was still a special season. That first year is really comes to mind for me. You know, we made it to the semifinals that year, you know, and then we felt that that year we, we had a better chance of beating the Islers than the North Stars did because we, we matched up pretty well against them. It was just, it was great to have some success on the ice and it was great just to, to be in a hockey atmosphere.